Good morning, everybody. Here we are. It's another awesome day. I am uh, in the sprayer, as you can see. So I got this thing going yesterday. I actually was able to, uh, I fixed it. I had a check valve the other day. So I need to back up a little bit. First, if you're watching this, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, and share it with your friends. It really helps out a lot with the channel. So, anyways, I had put some water in the sprayer the other day. I was going to test it out because I, I got some spraying. I mean, I need to get on it. I'm, it's too wet to plant right now, but it's, I can spray. <coughs> so, that's kind of where I was at. Well, <laughs> I went to try and uh, turn the pump on, turn the agitator on, and my check valve on the side of the tank, like, basically exploded and uh obviously that's not good so check valve blew water blew out was spraying out everywhere and i pretty much had to just wait and let it run out and uh yesterday i got out here and was looking pulled up the thing on john deere's website and was able to figure out check valve is what's messed up i couldn't tell what all had blown out and um went up there yesterday and picked up that and we are back in action now so pretty excited this will be the first like the, the maiden voyage for me on this sprayer um, since I bought it I've not really had a time to use it <coughs> but now I've got one so I put my tips and everything in it yesterday so I believe we're good to go I'm on Try to get it ready, fueled up, ready to rock and roll. I just put my GPS globe on top. It's not really showing much of a signal, but I'm hoping it'll kind of adjust because it's just not had anything on it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to put her to the test. Hopefully nothing messes up. That's my monitor here. You can see this is the older one. I had considered taking the 2630 out of my my tractor and putting it here but that's just I don't care about doing it that bad this monitor here will do just as well so I'm gonna use it hopefully you guys can hear me all right I am in the sprayer so change the plans a little bit it's actually the next day from whatever y'all see my my intro you probably notice the change of shirts I am I'm in the sprayer so I finally got to test it out yesterday. I had a few few tips kind of mess up on me and I had really no spare parts for it. So I had to make a John Deere run this morning. I got a I had a nozzle bust actually on that side. And uh, I thought I had the right spares. Turns out I did not. I had the old style and this uh, this sprayer apparently has been upgraded to high flow nozzles. So it takes a bigger, it's got a bigger setup on it. I mean the simplest way of describing it. Um, so I went to John Deere this morning. I got the nozzles, got some O-rings, placed the O-rings. I believe she is running like a champ now. Everything seems to be spraying good. The sprayer's working awesome. And it did a really weird thing yesterday. I was actually driving it to this field and the motor started like surging on the road. It had me kind of nervous. I don't know what it is. It's been doing great today. So really no clue what that was. Um, I talked to a John Deere tech and he kind of I mean he didn't really have any ideas either so hopefully it was just some weird fluke thing that happened and uh, it's not uh, an illusion or alluding to uh, a bigger problem but this is one of the new uh, new farms that I've picked up this 
price of the sweet corn. I about forgot. I had several people comment what they thought it cost. I, I had some people way off, and I had one guy really close. I think somebody said 450. I want to say I paid around 485 a bag, so 485 dollars for one six-pound bag of corn. If that doesn't, if that ain't crazy. You guys, I mean, it's, it's just mind-blowing to me that it is that expensive. I'm going to uh, actually unhook my planter now. I've got back to the shed, and the farm where I want to start planting at, it needs to have some of the, the paratill run on it. And they got the turbo till hooked up, so honestly, I'm just going to unhook my planter. I... Uh, used to this would have been like an absolutely not gonna happen kind of thing because the old planter it had a horrible pump that mounted on the back it was a pain in the butt to put on weighed like 80 pounds and uh was like i said just horrible to mount this one's just pto shaft so i have to take off a lot of hoses and uh take my pto shaft off but other than that it's really not that bad to unhook so I am going to move it to a little better location because it's right in the middle of the hay field here. I'm gonna move the planter, I don't know, maybe right there or so, and unhook it. And then I'm gonna put that dude on. But first, I gotta put the quick hitch on. So gonna get a pretty good bit of a workout in today because the quick hitch weighs, I don't know, I bet it weighs 150 pounds. I hope I can put it on by myself. My back might hurt a little bit tonight. But uh, yeah, see, I gotta have to take off the drive shaft, unhook this, unplug them hoses. It ain't that bad. Um, my jack, I do gotta go get my jack, actually. I came out here without it. But that's what the plan is now. It's 4.30, hoping I can get it mounted, get out there, maybe run for a little while and get some of that pear tilled. I'm pretty sure I told you guys, honestly, it's been a couple hours. I got back and I had to take care of some stuff, but I broke the boom on my sprayer. Um, I finished spraying over there. I may not have told y'all. I got done spraying and I was folding up and there's that metal pipe on the bottom of the boom on my right side was freaking broke. So I'm gonna have to weld that up. And this is where I really need a welder on my service truck because otherwise I'm gonna have to drive the sprayer all the way home and that's about a, hell, it's about a 30 minute drive in the sprayer. Worst part is I gotta go back um, because I'm not done spraying. <laughs> I gotta keep spraying. So I don't know, maybe this will be the catalyst that'll cause me to buy a welder, but uh, also need it pretty quick. So who knows, who knows what I'll do. I'll probably decide and lose sleep over that tonight. But right now, gotta get the jack. We're gonna take it off, the, the planter off, and go from there. But I'm kind of excited this farm, it, it really needed this paratill run on it in quite a few spaces, uh, spots. I had the little bit of junk timber cut off of it, and obviously they compacted the ground when they timbered it. So, <clears throat> all right. I don't know which one is mine, but I'm gonna take this one because they won't be they won't be unhooking their planter anytime soon. Ah, that is definitely something. If I could, uh, I could actually use a, another tractor now. It's amazing. That's that's the problem. As you grow, <laughs> everything else, your needs grow. Like it would be handy to just have a separate tractor that I could put this on, but I don't have that and I don't have the budget at the moment to try to buy another tractor. So here we go. We're gonna unhook the planter, run out here. It's still a little heavy anyway, so letting everything kind of dry. It's really windy now, so windy and sunny. This is good drying weather. Annabelle, what are you doing, girl? I'm, I put Annabelle in here. There's a lot of weeds. So she's getting her some really good snacks. Hey, Annabelle. Hey, girl. What are you doing there, Annabelle? 
little third. Oh, all right, guys. I'm going to get this unhooked and get the pair till on. There's a big difference between an 8420 and an 8345R. Now this tractor is supposed to have around 295 to 300 horsepower. The 8345R is supposed to have 345. And I think it might because this thing, this joker right here, that's all this tractor wants. On a hill, they don't even want it. I'm having to go really slow and I'm not running at full depth. So unfortunately that means it doesn't do quite as smooth of a job. But I have to ease it in there. And I mean it is pulling. I noticed something sounded a little weird on this tractor. And it just sounded even weirder just now when I really got in a push. And now I see then this may even be part of my problem. Maybe the tractor has a little more power than I'm giving it credit for, but my turbo on my, my boot on my turbo, it has messed up. It's actually come to all, it has came, it has come off the pipe. So I'm not getting the full turbo boost, which would obviously affect the power of the tractor. I'm gonna see if I got enough tools in here to try to fix that turbo, uh, turbo boot. If I can get it back on there, hopefully it hadn't like blown the boot. Uh, if otherwise, I'll have to go get a new turbo boot. I really don't want to go back to John Deere. It'd be nice if somebody locally has that. But uh, that's what I got to check out. I just noticed that. I popped the hood because, like I said, it sounded weird. That's why. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll try to show you. It's pretty dead gum hot in here. I've been running it. There is the boot on the turbo. Obviously, that is not what you want it to look like. I can see my clamp has slid down the pipe. I'm gonna try to loosen that. Now there's a good chance what happened because I just had all of that stuff taken off. And it was probably my doings. I'm, not, I'm taking ownership here, but I bet it didn't get tightened back on there and it's blown off. That is a good issue to have because that's a pretty simple fix. I just got to try to get the boot back on there, get the clamp on, tighten it up. And hopefully, I've got a toolbox in here. Hopefully, I have the size that I need to make it work. And we can get back to rolling. But I bet you that's going to add a lot more power to the tractor. So old Bertha here, she may may really come alive after I do that. It just sounded weird. I knew it did. You can, I bet it was blowing a lot of black smoke. When that thing's not on there right make them smoke like a freight train so i'm gonna fix that real quick and we'll try to get back going back in action hopefully that's all we have it sounded weird like i said it was whining like a real note. anyways we got the pair tail on about to try it out again see if it makes a difference you can see the lines i'm not able to run it quite as deep as my dad was with the 8345 because like i said it's it pulls hard i mean this this tractor's getting all she wants so maybe have a little more power now i don't know i guess we will see it well it did not increase the power
like I've told you guys, you know, I, I do prefer basically no, no tillage whatsoever. But this ground right here, it's been run over by skidders, semis, log trucks, whole nine yards. It would be, it, it needs it bad. So that's why I'm trying to run over it. I don't know, since it, I'm not running it as deep, I may have to come back with a turbo till hit this ground just because it's going to be pretty dang rough when I get in here to plant it. So, but overall, I'm glad to get out here and get this ground ready. I get it all going pretty good today. I'm definitely about to run out of daylight. It's almost 7 o'clock here at night. So I'm going to try to get in here maybe tomorrow start planting this place. It's dry enough and I need to get some, some of these beans in the ground out here. Got all the corn planted. Hopefully get it sprayed soon. But Ooh, this thing pulls hard. I'm telling you guys, this thing is tough. Alright, I like that spot. I'm gonna do some that away and just where the loggers run thing is it's going deep guys appreciate you tuning in uh, if you're watching please hit the like button hit the subscribe i'm gonna do some more like how to kind of videos i guess i don't know if that's the right name for it but uh people really like the no bs guide to row crop farming i'll do some more like that i, I enjoy doing that i like trying to you know help any way that i can and uh you know, if you've got a topic you really you really want me to explore, shoot me a comment below and let me know what it is, and I'll gladly discuss it as long as it's something I know. You know, if you ask me something I don't know a clue about, I'll be honest and tell you I don't know. So, guys, shoot me a comment below, hit the like button, subscribe, share with your buddies. Calling it a day. Uh, still got a little daylight left, but it's been a pretty long day. Uh, we've got a good bit done. Got a good bit knocked out here. I got to do a little over there and a little over there. And that'll pretty much be all I'm going to do over here. I may try to get on, I don't know, I may try to hit it with the turbo till. I'm going to look at it. It really won't be that rough, so I may just plan it how it is. This front field is going to be a little different because you can see there's parts of it over here that are turbo tilled. That's where my sweet corn is. So I'm gonna work probably from there back and then up here I'm gonna work a little ways back because I'm gonna put a pumpkin patch up there. So I'm gonna have a pretty good bit of stuff out here and all my vegetables and all that stuff's gonna be up there in the front. So people, they come in, when they pick pumpkins, they can pull in and they're not having to like run over crops. That's my, my thinking anyway. So I'm gonna try to, uh, I'll see where, cause even some of that turbo tilt area, I'll actually still plant beans even on that. But I'll probably put beans all the way up to here. I'm gonna do the pumpkin patch pretty much right down here in this bottom, do it all down in that bottom right there. Try to do a pretty big pumpkin patch. Now I will turbo till where I'm gonna put the pumpkins, but that's still about a month away. Maybe not quite a month, but it's around a month or so before I'll plant those. So I didn't really wanna work it up yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, y'all can see it isn't, it's definitely not breaking you up know, like a ripper wood, which runs equally as deep. But it, it, it would be smoother and flat down if I could run it all the way down. But I just, on going downhill, good running, I can kind of get it all the way down. But for the most part, old, old baby here, don't she don't want it all the way down. So it's not bad. It's still doing the job that I needed to do. Bust up that compacted ground. So I'm, I'm happy with it. 
I think it'll do a lot. It should help. The ground, when it gets really compacted like that, it does not... If you have high magnesium in the soil, which keeps your nutrients from breaking down good, I guess it's kind of the... Maybe that's kind of the dummy version of it. But uh, I've had high mag in the past where these guys had run over it with the timber trucks. It would have been like planting in concrete. I think the red planter would have done okay. They will, I always brag about them and say they will plant in concrete. But I think I'll have a better crop by doing this. And again, that's where all the pumpkins will be. So I definitely want that to be good. I want a good pumpkin patch. Um, but uh, all right, guys, that is pretty much it. I am waiting. Uh, my dad is actually coming to pick me up and I'm calling it a day. Got the farm sprayed that I needed to, broke the boom, so I've got to fix that. Got the planter unhooked, paratill on, ran the paratill out here. It's not a lot to really show you guys on that because it's pretty much doing everything underground. So if you're wondering like, man, I'd like to have seen the paratill, it's really not a whole lot to see. But guys, I appreciate you tuning in and catch you next time.